Well, glory to God, sinners and saints. How's everybody doing on this beautiful day that we have to serve the Lord? And man, what are we on? Day 49, I believe. I hope I got to double check. And I don't know why I don't double check this before we start doing these videos. But this is the youth group. This is Saturday. And what a beautiful day it is. I hope you've spent this last week like I encouraged your heart last week to get into a prayer closet. Get into a mode of praying and seeking the Lord. You know, I think a lot of times when I deal with young kids, they believe that because they're young, because of their age, perhaps they're not noticed. But like in our church down there, in our little country church, I always want to make sure the kids are noticed. I want you as the youth to know that you are noticed. There is no adult that should ever overlook you. You know, Jesus said that you should come to him like little old children, and even us adults should come as little children. We all have problems. And I know a lot of you young people have problems, and I know some of you are probably aware of some revivals that are breaking out right now, and I firmly believe it's because a lot of young people are going through a lot of things. My son and I had a conversation today, and I told my son while we were driving down the road, I simply said, I believe that you, being 14 years old, and people in these younger generations, they suffer from something called pride. This excessive pride of just maybe it's social media manufactured but I told him I said a lot of it I think is just fake pride pride in who you are because on the inside I believe a lot of people don't feel good about themselves they don't have the self-esteem I believe the social media generations and some of you young folks can identify with this you feel like you are alone in your rooms, you're alone on those phones, you're alone on the video games. There is no socialization where you are socialized with each other. You know, back when I was growing up, we were out riding bicycles and we were egging house. I mean, we were uh, we were doing things that we shouldn't have been doing, but we, we, had, we had time to get into trouble. But we did things. We were out. We were building forts in the woods, and we were just doing things that were fun, and we had, we were socialized because we didn't have things in our hands. And I believe revival right now is breaking out because people really do want to come out of their shells. So for you young people that watch me on these Saturday videos, you need to know that you are seen by us adults and us preachers and us ministry staff. You should be seen by your parents, and if you're in a home where you don't feel like you're seen, you, I suggest you, you seek out a church. You seek out something that will help you get out of that shell. Now, we're going to go to the Word of God here on this very short message. I keep these videos about 10 minutes on Saturday. In Genesis chapter 1 and 1. And turn to your Bible there. And young folks, get you a Bible right here. Good old, I, I, I study the King James Version. I'm a King James believer. I believe the reason why that I follow the King James, and most people should, is because it's the most authentic translation from those old Greek and Hebrew writings. I want you young people to be educated. I hold you to a much higher standard. I'm, that's why I don't preach down and, and keep it on a preschool level with you, because I know with my son and my daughter, who are teenagers, y'all are smart. You're way smarter than I am. And I believe that's where the pride comes in because you are intellectual. You do have access to an abundance of information that other people would have never had access to just 20 years ago. So, of course, you're smarter. But you've also got to realize this. The devil comes along on social media. He comes along in school. and He will make you into something that you're not. He will give you a brand new identity. The lesson I want to tell you about today is recognizing who God is versus who you are. In Genesis 1 and 1, it simply says, In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and the darkness was up on the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved up on the face of the waters. If you don't need to know nothing else, there's the first two scriptures in the Word of God. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. You have to understand this God that created us in, 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 us, in, in the image of Him. You know, here I am at the age that I'm at, and there you are at the age that you're at, God created both of us. God created this world. He created this kitchen table. He created this, every material thing that was brought together. When he made you, he wanted to have a relationship with you. He wanted to have a 
kind of relationship like maybe some of us may not have had with our mom or dad or, or a grandfather or grandmother that we're living at home with. He wanted to have a personal relationship where you honored and loved him and you obeyed him and, and you did what was right. And even in the times that you did things that were not right, he understands. But he's also got judgment that is reserved by understanding his word that when we do mess up, we need to repent for our sins. Make things right with God. Because if we don't, you know what happens, and I've seen this dealing with kids, especially when I was a police officer and I was dealing with them in inter interviews and abuse situations. <clears throat> if you continue to make yourself God, and you're the God and you're the center of your life, and when you're the center of your life, you get to choose your music. So let's say you choose rock and roll, hardcore gangster rap, Let's say you take all of your time and you spend it watching TikTok videos or playing video games. You're conditioning yourself and your mind to be away from God. That really does pull you away from God. Without reading his word, without praying, without having the right mental attitude and the physical attitude, we'll become our own gods. And I know myself as a teenager, I was so rebellious and away from God. I knew God. My mommy and daddy showed me God, took me to church, but I rebelled because I wanted to be my own God. I didn't want the Bible to tell me what to do. I didn't want nobody at school to tell me what to do. I didn't want society to tell me what to do. And I'm going to tell you kids this one thing. Society helps you be a God. It wants you to be a God. Even, even some of this uh, so-called theology and so-called New Age Christian music makes you the God. And I'm telling you as an old school preacher, and people may say um, they've called me legalistic Pharisee, they've called me old school, and I'm, I'm out of date, and the things I'm preaching aren't biblical anymore. Well, the Bible says it, that God is God, and you are not. I'm not God. This very first verse nails everything home. If you can't believe that God is God, then you can't believe the rest of the Bible. You'll never believe that an axe head floated. You'll, that, was, that was one of the miracles. You'll, you'll never believe that the sea, a sea was parted. You'll never believe that. You'll never believe that the blind was healed or that a devil was cast out of a human being. If you don't believe in the beginning was God, you've also got to believe that this God can deliver you from whatever hellish, Thing you're going through right now you have to put your faith in security now one of the best things that I suggest you know it's like if you don't believe just believe somebody believes it's hard to have teenagers and kids today and I know why it's harder to preach to them is because it's harder to have a bond with people because the younger generation has so many choices you can choose your God. You literally can because there's so many of them out there that is offered to you on TikTok videos and YouTube and etc. But what I'm telling you on this Sunday school video, this Sunday youth group video, that God created the heaven and the earth. He is the one true God. He is the one that stands by for you to believe in his son Jesus Christ so you may be saved from your sins. And see, no matter what the world may present to you to try to make things a bit more friendly, the gospel is a gospel that we have to endure sometimes hard things. And sometimes we got to make hard decisions. And, you know, you, you, you look at my kids, for example. I've always been rough but gentle. You know, hard like my kids and, and some of you, you need to get out of bed in the morning. When your mom and dad says, get up, you need to go. Get up. Get up, get out of that bed. My kids have never laid in bed. And you know why? Because they know there's a consequence. And my kids, when they were real young, when they'd lay in that bed, boy, I tell you what, I'd be flipping a mattress on them. I'd be getting them up, getting them out of that bed, at whatever it took to get them out of that bed. And, and so they learned young. When daddy or mommy says, get out of bed, it's time to get out of bed. And it's the same way with us in our Christian walk. You have to become disciplined in this word. And when you become disciplined in this word, you'll become disciplined in other aspects of your life. I've just merely spoken to kids 
and encouraged their hearts and opened up their mind that they could be something better than they are, and they become straight-A students. How does that happen? It's by encouragement, but discipline. How would you get an A if you didn't work and discipline yourself to actually do the work? And it's the same thing in the Word of God. When you first put God as being God and God is in His place, everything else will fall into place in your life. And you'll find out if you're 14, 15, 16 year old, years old now and you're and you're struggling with your grades. Let's say you're a straight-A F student. Say, I'm not going to be an F student anymore. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. If you truly want to serve God and have God in you, you've got to calm down enough to say, I'm going to buckle down and do what it takes. I'm going to make my bed. I'm going to brush my teeth. I'm going to put on a clean set of clothes. I'm going to get up at the appointed time. I'm going to make it to the bus stop. See, now that's good, good Christian living for a youth, is you just get out and do it, and you don't complain about it. Later on down the road, you know what that sets up? When God is the center of your life, if you go to college, if you go to a tech school, if you go to the military, military, they're especially going to get you out of bed. You're in a pattern of good behavior. And this leads to the best thing I can teach you. Do good, you feel good. Do bad, you feel bad. A lot of people in this life have to do a lot of bad and feel a lot of bad before they get to, they get tired of it and then they start doing good but I'm telling you right now you don't have to mess up if you've never messed up really bad you don't have to you don't have to go down a dark road put God first in your life honor your mom and dad if you're not living with mom and dad I know a lot of you that watch these videos you're living at home with grandma because your parents are drug addicted and then you know you've got parents in prison and stuff pray for them do not be angry at them and let that bitterness and that unforgiveness rule your heart. I'm telling somebody that tonight because I've been dealing with that here recently. Uh, unforgiveness in young people. Mature in Christ. Put God first. Forgive your parents. And if you can't forgive them, forgive them anyways. Pray for the Lord to give you wisdom and grace to forgive. That way, it's not going to affect you later and get you in bigger trouble. I praise God for the young people watching me, and I thank you for listening and, and taking this word to your heart. And I pray that you pass it on to other young people around you. Be the light in your community. Amen. I love you all out there today. I praise God for you, and I look forward to coming back to you again next Saturday. Amen.